All right, so we've talked about the basics of nodes and edges. I want to start introducing some vocabulary that we can use to talk about more complicated graphs. Um, so right here I have a slightly more complicated graph. I guess I can have all of these nodes that um, kind of are in this loop. And, uh, and you can see the code for that up here. And uh, in the context of this, I want to introduce this notion of a path. And a path is just a sequence of edges to get from one node to another. So, so maybe I might ask, well, you know, uh, is there a path from, let's say, B to, to E? And, um, and it turns out there is. Maybe I'll just draw that path. I'm trying to get from, from B to E. Uh, well, I guess first I would draw from B to A is probably what I would do if I was driving. So maybe let me just kind of, I'll, I'll make this red and, and maybe make the line width larger. I would maybe first, um, actually it wasn't line width, it was pen width. I would probably first do that. And then and then after getting to B, I would probably go from B to, or I'm sorry, I'd probably go from A to E, which I guess is down here. I might do something like that. And uh, in, in red, I've just highlighted, okay, well, there's this path from, from B to E, right? So there is a path between those two. And, and the path is, I might write out using some sort of notation like this. I might say, you know, B to A to E is a path. Um, now, if I look at this, it turns out that that's not the only path, right? Um, I could have, if I wanted to go to, go to B from B to C to D to E. And um, I guess in that case, if I'm driving, uh, maybe that takes longer, maybe depending on how long each of these edges are, maybe it's shorter. And, and so as we're kind of learning more about graphs, we're going to be asking a couple things. We're going to often ask, well, is there a path between two nodes? Um, or maybe a more complicated question is, uh, what is the shortest path between, between two nodes? Um, now, another thing I want to define is connected. And connected means there is a path between any pair of nodes. And so maybe looking at this graph right here, that's absolutely uh, connected, right? I can start anywhere and, um, and I can get anywhere. Now that doesn't have to be so. I mean, if I, if I kind of draw my, um, if, I, if I draw my edges a little bit differently, for example, maybe I'll say that, um, uh, you know what, and I can even kind of simplify this a bit. One of the cool things here is if I, um, if I just start drawing edges like this, let's just say I, I kind of draw an edge from A to B, uh, it will automatically add those nodes for me. It infers that I want those nodes. So, so I could have something like that. And then I, over here, I could have something else. I could have something like uh, C goes to D, uh, G dot edge, D goes to E, uh, and then E goes to D. Uh, oh, that wasn't quite what I wanted. I, I guess I wanted to have uh, E goes to C like that great and, and so this picture it, it you know maybe your first instinct is to call it two graphs but by definition at least here i could say this is one graph and uh and it's an example of a graph that is not it is not connected why well between some nodes there's there's a path right i mean i can go from c to e but i can never go from a to c Right. Um, you could imagine if my graph represents um, maybe towns and the roads between them, uh, saying that there's connect, it's connected is like saying, well, there are no islands. Right. So that's something we'll often ask. Well, is the graph connected, um, or or is it not connected? Um, a little bit more uh, vocabulary. Um, sometimes I'll talk about um, cycles. Right. So a cycle. Cycle is a uh, a sequence of paths uh, that starts and ends at the same node, right? Uh, without really repeating, right? Without repeats, right? I can't use the same edge more than once. So let me just draw, draw an example of a cycle here. Uh, I'll say um, color equals red, pen width equals three. Right, so so here's an example of a cycle, right? So the cycle is 
Uh, maybe I'll just put my example up here. There, I'll, I'll kind of move my notes around. All right, so I had connected, and then I gave an example of a graph that is not connected. And now with cycles, um, so C to D to E to C uh, is a cycle, right? Because I kind of start, um, I, I start at a node and I end at the same node, and I never have to reuse the same edge, right? Each time I'm taking a different edge. Um, this would not be a cycle. A to B to A is not a cycle. Okay, so just some, some definition there. Now, we've been talking about all these graphs, and, um, and kind of all of these edges between nodes don't really have any direction to them. But I've been making this analogy to streets, and so uh, the question is, well, how, how, how would we deal with um, kind of one-way streets, right? I can get to, from A to B, but I can't, I can't kind of take it back. And, um, and so I may need a, a kind of a more specific kind of graph. Instead of just creating a graph like this, I am going to create a, a digraph, okay, just like this. And, uh, and then if I copy all of this code up here, right, let me, let me kind of just grab all of this. And then I'm going to look at it at the end. Here, I'll just kind of start kind of a simply, uh, at least initially, I'll do that and, um, and, uh, and you know what my problem is? Way, way back at the top, I have my problem. From graph is, I import graph, which is what I was using here. And, and now I also have to import die graph, which stands for directed graph, right? You can see there's like the DI part, directed graph. So I'm gonna run that and then head back down here. And, and now it, it matters a lot the order in which I put these things. Do I put A first or B first, right? If I you can see that there's this arrow, right? That points from A to B. If I switch this, if I say B to A, uh, <laughs> well, that's kind of a confusing picture, right? Um, the arrow is pointing in the other direction now. It just moved the nodes B and A, right? But it, it changed directions, right? So I'll kind of switch that back. Instead of pointing from B to A, now it points from A to B. And, uh, and so then I'll also add back, um, I'll add back these nodes, right? So I'll have that. And, um, and, and so I can still ask this question of, um, of, of whether or not the graph is connected, right? I guess this one would still not be connected. Uh, what about, let me, let me kind of uh, throw in a twist here and, and see what you think about this definition of, of, of connected. Um, let me go from, uh, you know, let's just go from B to D. Okay, I kind of moved everything around. But is that a connected graph? And the answer is no. It connected no, because there is no path, for example, from D to A. Right, if I start in D, I cannot get to A, right? Because, you know, there's edges here, right? But they're in the wrong direction. I can't do it, right? So that is, is not an example, right? So I, I might still ask these questions, right? Is it connected or not? And, and maybe it is or maybe it isn't. Um, if, I added, uh, uh, if I added an edge like this, if I added, say, from E back to A, this would make it connected. Right, and not, now even though it's kind of one-way streets, right, no matter where I am, you know, I can kind of cycle around and, and I can get anywhere I want, right? So that would make it connected, but I don't have that, right? So, so this is not a connected graph. Okay, the other piece of vocabulary I want to uh, introduce here, right, is um, uh, th th I guess there's a few more terms that we need to cover. Um, one is weakly connected. Is it weakly connected? Uh, and for this, we can and ignore. Uh, we can. Well, I'll, I'll say it this way: we can go backwards, take edges backwards, right? So basically, when I asked if something's weakly connected, uh, I'm saying, well, hey, if I ignore the direction of the edges, uh, then is it connected? And yeah, of course it is, right? I mean, in this case, yeah. I mean, I could go from D to B to A if I'm willing to ignore that. So then I can say yes. 
than it would be weakly connected, right? So when, when we had um, when we had kind of graphs like this, where there is, you know, I'm not worrying about the direction of the edges, uh, there, there's no need to talk about this weakly connected because I can always go both ways, right? So, so this idea of connected, I might use for either kind of graph. Uh, weakly connected, I'm just trying to use for directed graphs like this. Okay. Um, so let me, let me kind of, um, some other things I want to talk about here. Uh, for directed uh, edge, source is called parent. Uh, and destination is called child, right? So, um, well, let me think about that in the context of here. I guess I would say B, B is a child of its parent, which is A. I might also say something like um, D is a grandchild um, of A to kind of borrow language from uh, from uh, you know human family trees. Um, I can also say things like um, you know D is its own great grandchild, right? So <clears throat> D is the child. D is the child of C, the grandchild of E, and D is the great grandchild of itself, right? So that's just some vocabulary that we'll be using. Um, now, I could keep kind of being specific and I could say, oh, it's a great, great, great grandchild, but um, we're going to be using the vocabulary, we'll just say it's an ancestor, right? It's kind of going back uh, along the edges or a descendant uh, going forward along the edges. Okay. Now, when I'm kind of looking at these graphs, right, <coughs> I want to introduce this new kind of graph, which is called a directed acyclic graph. And, and we're going to abbreviate that. So let me, let me head down here. We're going to have a directed acyclic graph, and that's abbreviated DAG. And DAGs actually show up all, all the time. And, um, and so let's just break down these, uh, these letters, right? This means uh, directed edges. Uh, a means a cyclic, no cycles. So, you know, this graph would not count, right? Uh, be, because, um, well, uh, there's a cycle there, right? I can go D, E, C, D. And then, well, it's just a graph, right? And, and of course, everything we're talking about now is a graph. So maybe that's the, the least interesting part of it. So, so let me give you an example of a, of a directed acyclic graph. Um, so equals digraph, and I'll say g, uh, g dot edge. Maybe I can say a goes to b. Um, maybe a goes to c, and then I'll have both of these nodes end up at d. Can can you already start to picture what the graph looks like? Uh, b also goes to d, and I have to put that at the end to actually see it. Right, I, I might get shapes like this, right? Where uh, kind of, um, you know, I can go forward through the system <clears throat> and I might branch out and merge back together, but there's really no going back. And um, and you've actually already seen a, an example of this, right? Um, a get is an example of a DAG, right? So, so DAGs are gonna show up all the time um, and, and that's gonna be kind of useful for us. All right, so so um, uh, I'm trying to think what other uh, what else I want to cover in this video. And the next time I'm going to be talking about more specific kinds of DAGs, uh, and in particular I'm going to be talking about trees. And, and then we're going to spend a lot of time, you know, in upcoming lectures actually talking about how we can write code for trees.